you see the intro? <laughs> Hi, <laughs> welcome to Never Show the Monster. I'm Kelly Attaway. I'm Chelsea Hollander. Wow, I am so delayed. We're good. Today. We're doing good. <laughs> <laughs> and today we are talking about the uh, 2006 movie titled Abominable as we continue our series on cryptids. And we just frantically had to start recording because... Uh, boy, there is a fact about this movie <laughs> <laughs> that we don't have any more details on, though I hope that that's what Chelsea was looking at when she was distracted just now. Yeah, I don't have any more details on it. I was trying to look up. <laughs> it's so sad. Not to be confused with the 2019 animated film, Abominable, oh, yeah. which is about like a an adorable cartoon yeti. Um, yeah, the fun fact... <laughs> Was I was looking up other facts about it, and then what caught my eye was the box office for it. Oh, not just opening weekend, just all it oh. gross opening weekend gross and worldwide gross one thousand eight hundred and ten dollars. <laughs> this was in two thousand six, so adjusted for inflation is like what maybe like three grand. <laughs> that is, that is. <laughs> so okay. I cannot believe that that was like, this must not have been wide release. It For must sure have not. been like one theater. They were like, let's see how it does. And 10 people went. <laughs> Maybe it was like at festivals. I didn't even look that up to see if it, it wasn't in the trivia. It didn't say that it was at festivals in the trivia. It doesn't really seem like a festival movie, does it? Could be like a horror festival. Okay, yeah. Yeah, it would definitely have it, have it at a, a horror. Oh, uh-huh, it would. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> yes, and the attendant and, yeah, the guy with the glasses is the writer-director. Oh. Named Ryan Schifrin. Schifrin? Schifrin. Well, then who's this uh, with the title of clerk in the IMDb cast list named Jeffrey Combs? Okay, what? Okay, at the bottom, it has gas station attendant. Oh, maybe he's the jet. Ja- okay, okay. I've I've been mistaken. I am oh, mistaken. Oh, yeah. There was also a guy outside pumping gas. So did the did the writer director have like a non speaking role? Yeah, I think that that was him. Okay, that makes more sense. They both had long hair, so I immediately just was like, <laughs> okay, two people with long hair. He's wearing glasses. It's hard to recognize people. That's how we didn't know Superman and Clock. Clark Kent were the same person. That's true. So when you said that you thought that that might be him, I thought that you must have been right. Here's why. Mm -hmm. That character is doing like a whole, like, I'm Stephen King doing a cameo in my movie thing. There's even a line in the movie that felt very much like from that character. He essentially says, uh, sometimes dead is better (laughs) from Mm -hmm. um, Pet Cemetery. Uh, but for the context of this movie. So I thought for sure that you must be right, that it was the writer-director doing, like, a Stephen King bit. I mean, he technically did. He just didn't talk, and he was in the movie just... He did do a tiny cameo. More like Moreau's Red handing somebody a pizza, I guess. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Um, But the other part is the, the opening scene has, like, a couple, an older couple... And I think one of them, so one of them is Dee Wallace. Uh-huh, and yeah. And she is, you might know her from E.T., but she's also on Cujo. She's in a lot of oh. horror movies. Oh, cool. Yeah. And I was like, so there's a lot of crossover. That's awesome. Um, let me see what else she's in. Yeah, she's in Cujo, Critters, The Howling. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, right? Great. Uh, she's been in 262. Sorry. And she's got 14 coming up. She is prolific. Wow. Look at her go. Yeah, and it's mostly, like, horror. That rules. How do I get that gig? I think we're going to, we might do a, a D. Wallace series at some point. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we have so many to choose from uh, if we decide on on doing that. So we might come back. Critters Attack Dolls, which oh, on the dolls. cover it looks like Chucky. <laughs> so, what um, year? R- roundabout what year? 2019. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I really thought that it would have been 80s around the time that, you know, Chucky and or Child's Play and um, Puppet Master. It does seem like she's doing a lot of movies that are like movies that are around movies that aren't the movie. So like in 2018, she was in Ouija House. <laughs> <laughs> and 
okay okay hold on is that uh real real <laughs> Sorry, is, let me let me clarify what i mean let me let me clarify <laughs> is it um uh serious is it a serious attempt at a movie or is it goofy? a girl takes her friends to a house with a dark past for a research project they unwittingly summon an evil entity with plans of its own so no it looks it's horror thriller no comedy oh boy just completely wow. Okay, we're going to have to watch that at some yep. point. Mm-hmm. It's got Misha Barton, you know, from the OC. <laughs> ah, this is going to slap. And Tara Reid. Oh, it's my God. It's got Tara Reid. We could do a Tara Reid series. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm so excited. This is like a treasure trove. Hell yeah. Okay, great. All right. That's <laughs> okay. good. We've got a, a future series. It's probably going to be after like four series. But... Cool. You heard it here, folks. This is how these things come to come to life. We uh, <laughs> just go down IMDb rabbit holes until we get excited. Um, but yeah, Abominable, from the title, you might have guessed, Bigfoot movie. Here's the summary of the film. Bigfoot mad. That's good. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Rear window. You were correct. I don't know if we caught this on recording when we were talking about it last week. You said it was like a rear window. Oh, Based yeah. on what we read. You 100% right. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. Um, at some point when the, uh, when his, okay, so for a little more context for the listener. <laughs> <laughs> I think you, I think we're good. I think that's I enough was context. right. <laughs> Just left, <laughs> left out some, some things. So, um, yeah, in this movie, this guy, uh, Preston Rogers, played by Matt McCoy, who is, so familiar to me, but did not recognize anything he's been in. Um, he is be- being forced to go back to the house where he used to live with his wife in a small town where uh, they were mountain climbing and fell and she passed away. And now he is in a wheelchair. And um, while while there, he uh, he rear windows his way into a Bigfoot sighting. Um, but when they, when they first get there and his his care nurse carries him up the stairs and is kind of mean to him, I was like, oh, not only is it rear window, but we're going to do misery, too. Yeah, a lot of combinations in this one. And a lot of, like, references to things throughout it. Yep. Um, before we get started, should we do we recommend a watch? <laughs> um... Before I can answer that, I need you to answer a question. Okay. Did this movie intend to be so funny? I I think so. I think I so thought too. it was super fun. I, like I liked it so much more than <laughs> I, I thought, and I was same. dreading it so hard. Okay, thank God. <laughs> I was dreading watching this one so hard. Yeah. And by the end of it, like I watched the last ten minutes on my TV finally, <laughs> yeah. and then I was like, oh. Oh my god this movie's so good <laughs> i was having a great time like yeah once i stopped resisting because at the top of the movie <laughs> it seems like it's gonna be not good yes yeah <laughs> for sure it, it draws you in to be like uh right yeah you're like i don't know like this is gonna try to be serious about bigfoot like i don't think you can do that um but it doesn't yeah good okay yeah, yeah i think that it's intentionally goofy so yeah, give give her a watch. And it was a it was cheap. Oh, I have Peacock. Oh, sure. It you can watch it with ads on Prime Video, but I was like, oh. no. No, thank I you. won't. I won't do that. <laughs> so <laughs> I paid the $2 to rent it. Yeah. It's worth a rent for sure. Oh, we yeah. need it. Th- Throw two dollars into that one thousand eight hundred and ten, um, if you can, guys. <laughs> I don't know. I might. I might recommend a purchase depending on the price because I'm probably gonna watch that again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm actually probably gonna watch that again. That's one that I feel like I would. I would have friends watch that. Like yes. I would sit and I would be like, I'm gonna put on this movie. You guys are gonna think it's really fucking stupid, <laughs> right. but trust me, by the end, you're gonna be sold. You're gonna be like, sold. lean in. You're going to have a good time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm glad that we had a similar experience. That makes me very happy. I did read that they um, they filmed it on 35 millimeter specifically to make it look older. Like 
like a throwback horror movie. And I was like, oh, that's what I was experiencing at the top when I was like, mm. oh, this is going to be like dry. But yeah. That was patina, essentially. And I think all the acting was very good. Yes. And funny. Uh, yeah, I thought it was better <laughs> acting than I expected. Agreed. And I was like, they're really throwing themselves into these characters, and I love it. I yeah. love it. <laughs> So um, it's not just Matt McCoy and his nurse and Bigfoot. There are a group of gals across the way. They're who he's rear windowing. He's mm. um, they keep calling him a peeping Tom, which that is what Fair. he looks that like from their doing. vantage. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, a group of gals over there on a bachelorette party, and um, uh, I felt like they treated them more respectfully than a lot of horror movies do, even though they were playing, like, big titty bimbos. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> but it felt like, um, like, winking, right? Yeah. It felt like, yeah, it felt like it, it, they were part of the joke rather than, like, the butt of the joke. Yeah, I I can agree with that, for sure. And the name of the, like main female is Haley Joel but not every time I'm like with any relation to the Osmond no obviously no. not why would you be related <laughs> to them I oh uh, maybe well maybe she's like um his aunt or something and he was named after her that's sweet yeah this movie came out in 2006 that's right Science it just looks came old. out in <laughs> <laughs> yeah I assume that Haley Joel was probably Haley Joel and Haley Joel got to be around the same age. Maybe they're twins. Maybe they're and twins. One the <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like um, George Foreman and all of his sons oh are named my gosh. George. <laughs> and his daughters are Georgina. <laughs> oh, I didn't know his daughters were. I thought they were also George. So that's nice. <laughs> oh, oh, boy, that guy. So, yeah, maybe that's the <laughs> Haley Joel family. <laughs> yeah, that's a tangent. I also wanted to talk about. The guy who plays the nurse mm-hmm, mm-hmm, that goes with mm-hmm. him. Do you know? I know some stuff. Are you about to? Are we going to make a connection to something? He's acted in two movies. Oh. And the other one is the movie Felon starring Val Kilmer. <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> no, and he I plays didn't like, know that. I th- his credit for that movie is like belligerent guy or something. Like it's a non, it's a non person. <laughs> that seems right. <laughs> And there was, like, he also, he's, like, a makeup artist. Yep. And he shaved his head. Yeah. But, like, a little bald spot. (laughs) I don't know why that was necessary for the character, but I think that when I read that, I was like, you know what? I think this movie is a lot smarter than I thought. (laughs) It was just commitment. Commitment to the role. He also grew that horrible goatee specifically for this this role. Um, I did. This is what I thought you were going to say. Um. He has done makeup and special effects on a bunch of stuff. And really good stuff. I'm not that this isn't really good. (laughs) (laughs) No, but but like like, things that may have been nominated for Oscars. Hold on. I'm going to have to look it up. I was so impressed with what his. (laughs) Let me list off a couple of them. So I am legend. Um, He was one of the like he designed monsters in that one. Um, He. Worked on American Horror Story for many seasons. Men in Black 3. I wonder if that's the face you made or was it Renfield? He's it was head Renfield. Of the makeup department <laughs> for Renfield. <laughs> yeah, it was Renfield. That's what I got so excited. He also did True Grit. Yeah. And I was I, like, oh, I fell asleep in that, in that one. Has he, has he won awards for his makeup? It feels like. I hope so. Based on what awards? Seven wins. <gasps> He got an Oscar nominee for uh, Abominable Passion of the Christ. Oh, wow. I didn't know he did Passion of the Christ. Um, Primetime Emmy winner for Westworld. Oh, I did see he worked on that. Yeah. American Horror Story. He did he did makeup for American Horror Story. Mm-hmm. The Normal Heart. Um, Behind the Candelabra. Glee? Glee? Yeah, I guess so. And then Nick Tuck. <laughs> Awards for... Yeah, I... He, he's an award winner. He's won awards. He's an award-winning makeup artist. He truly is. Man, good for him. He designed this Bigfoot. He designed it? Oh, yeah. good. 
<laughs> those teeth, they yeah, those teeth. made me feel seen. And I just, <laughs> his like, r- like round, rosy face. And very flat, <laughs> just very, very flat. Very flat. And I was like, I'm scared of this, but I'm not at the same I'm time. Not. <laughs> They kept showing the eyes just being spooky in the woods. And um, then when we, like, see the face full on for the first time, I laughed so hard. (laughs) What an incredible reveal. (laughs) And it's, like, I don't know. It's goofy. But it's, like, technically very good. And it's physical. It's not CG. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. So good. Oh, boy. Yeah, that got me real good. I thought the kills in the movie were really good. Uh, yes. Some of the best I've seen in <laughs> any of the movies we've watched, I think. Okay. Which was your favorite? I liked her getting pulled out of the window. <laughs> that? I... <laughs> Okay, I only have two kills in my notes, and that is one of them. (laughs) Is the other one the head getting bitten off? Yeah. Because that was good. (laughs) But yeah, the way her body just like flops through it. Folds in half. So so good. She looks like like a Barbie. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I guess she got pulled. So did that break her spine? Yeah, I guess so. I'm trying to think of all the other ones because the first one, I guess. Oh, you those... didn't really see it. She just got pulled. Yeah, she got hurt and then she got pulled. But they were just the best kind of over the top. Oh gosh, there's a part. Um, I don't even remember what he was looking at. Somebody finds, uh, like a mutilated body, <laughs> and their response is, "Ugh, that is gross." <laughs> <laughs> A very realistic yeah. response. <laughs> so we also need to talk about the tech in the f- the film because yes. that was a big point, a big <laughs> thing in the film. That was a big thing. We had yeah. cell phones. We had email. Um, this is 2006. We had better cell phones than that at this time, right? It was 2005, 2004, I guess, when they shot it. Maybe. Well, yeah, I guess. I guess they had. Because they had a Nokia phone, right? They right. had like a little mm-hmm. brick phone. And then, and he was like, it's not from the phone, it's from the satellite for his internet. Right. And he was emailing the <laughs> police station, but being like, you can't tell them it's a monster. Okay. <laughs> Were you reading his emails as he was composing them? I read it, and then he, like, would erase it and then rewrite it. And then I'm like, all of these sound crazy. None of them work. <laughs> Let me tell you the one that got me so good. <laughs> um, he... It, well, I guess he was emailing, uh, he was trying to text the girls, not mm-hmm. email the police. Um, but he's composing to them and he says, uh, like, there's a creature in the woods, get police. And then he, like, shakes his head and he's like, that sounds stupid. And then yeah. he rewrites it <laughs> and he just put get police in all caps this time. <laughs> and, I thought it, and I thought that that character was also weird because even after he said it, he was like, ah. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I was like, yep, that's how I feel every time I send Same. an email. <laughs> yeah, sending emails are, is hard. <laughs> I'm just like, somehow don't respond. Get caught up in the internet in between. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and at the, um, uh, I guess the first time he sees the Bigfoot, he comes into the house and he, like, shakes his head and he's like, like, says it out loud. Like, there is a monster in the woods. You are not crazy. Though you are talking to yourself. (laughs) Same, Preston. Relatable. (laughs) Yeah, this character was very likable. Until one point at the end, I was like, "Mm, maybe I'm not okay with that. Uh, Yeah. Six months, man. Maybe wait a year before you go for a 20-year-old. Maybe. (sighs) Maybe. Yeah, I wasn't even so worried about the six months. I was like, she has head trauma and she's a baby. Like, Yeah, she is a child. She could probably be your child. You don't need to, like, lean over her like that. He didn't actually mm. do anything, though. No, but there was a moment where they almost had a moment. There was a moment. They had a moment. I guess if there was a second Abominable, we would explore that. 
So maybe that's why it didn't get more than 1810. Um, they really pretty clearly were setting us up for a sequel with that closing shot. Yeah. Yeah. That was great. It's not too late. How's Matt McCoy doing? Can we can we Give bring him back? Yeah. Is he? How is he? Uh, is doing? he still what with is us? he? I don't know. To? I don't know. I'm so worried all the know. time when I, I talk about any type of. I, I did like the. It's not a cameo. He was a character in it, but the the sheriff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The principal from Breakfast Club, and he had a mug that said "Bull Horns." Wait, oh. am I making that up? <laughs> His um, uh, when he's yelling at Judd Nelson. Yeah, but I thought he had. One in the movie too. I read that in the oh, trivia. In Breakfast and maybe Club, he he also had a the bulls mug. I thought he did. Did he not have it in the in Breakfast Club oh, and in? I don't. I don't remember. Me neither. I'm. He's, just, I'm not he doing talks well. about getting the horns in oh, Breakfast okay. Club, but maybe yeah. he also has the mug. I can't remember if he has the mug in that, but there was a trivia bit that said he had the mug, or maybe it was just describing his character <laughs> in <laughs> Breakfast Club. And I can't read. I can't read good. I don't know. They did do like a shot of his desk. And I only uh, noticed that because his name is Dick Halderman. And there's a bunch of Stephen King stuff here. And so I was like, Dick Halloran from The Shining. Like, are we doing a a Shining thing? But maybe that was meant to be a mug scene. And I'm reading too much into Halderman. (laughs) No, I feel like there's a lot of... Easter eggs in this movie that we just didn't get to. Somebody else didn't spoon feed it to me, so I'm not getting it as quickly as I should. It's one that I'll have to watch again in a year, and then I'll be like, I've I've picked out the ones from from these movies. Another one was like when he grabbed a knife, and then he's like, we're going to need a bigger knife. And I was like, oh, like a bigger boat. Is that what you're doing? (laughs) Mm, I see. I see what you're doing there. And then um, at the end, when Bigfoot gets pinned between the mm. car and the tree. Is that signs? Was it signs that that happened in? Does that happen in signs? I can't remember. I remember that from a movie. Mm. I think it does. I think that that's where, I think it's signs. I think that it's like Joaquin Phoenix's mom. She tells him <sighs> to like swing away or whatever. But he just beats it to death with a bat. I was thinking more about the water. Oh, yeah. They <laughs> splash some water on it and then it burns it. And then he beats it with a bat. Yeah. That's a really violent movie. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> I haven't hmm. watched that in a long time. I should watch it again. We're going to do an Alien series eventually, so... Actually, when this movie started, I thought, oh no, did we do it again? Are we doing... Is this another Alien movie? Because it's in Flatwoods. Are you familiar with the Flatwoods monster? No. Is it also an alien? Is the Flatwoods monster an alien? Yeah, I mean, it depends on who you ask. <laughs> it's okay. like, um, it's, uh, some people categorize it as cryptid, but hmm. the night that it was sighted in Flatwoods, West Virginia. Also um, a UFO sighting? Also a UFO sighting. That checks out. Uh, scientists say it was a meteor and that the monster was actually an owl. Came over on the meteor? Oh, wait, what? No, scientists don't know shit about shit. <laughs> You're not wrong. <laughs> Come for me, scientists. I think a good scientist would admit that they don't know shit about shit. <laughs> I think so, so too. I, yeah. yeah. If you're you're a bad scientist, if you're like, yeah, I know everything for sure, and I'm a hundred percent. You simply don't. You simply do not. But I think normal people know less shit for shit than shit. Oh, I yeah. can't word. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Struggling. <laughs> oh boy. Um. So yeah, when he pulled into Flatwoods, I was like. Oh no, we accidentally watched another alien movie. <laughs> I would have been okay with <laughs> And then um there's a scene where gosh, I watched this so late at night that I can't even remember who was doing this. Who was watching like YouTube videos on monsters? Was it Preston? Yeah, yeah. He was like doing Bigfoot research. Oh. Was he watching YouTube videos? <laughs> I guess not because YouTube didn't exist until the next year, but there was a video playing in the background and they were talking about how like Bigfoot isn't mean. Mm. And I was like, oh, they're also leading me down the Flatwoods monster path. Did you know the plural of Bigfoot is Bigfoots? 
I guess if you have multiple, if you say big feet, then you're just like, well, that could still be one big foot. That could be one monster. With two big feet. Right. <laughs> mm. How much um how much do you know about Bigfoots? Not enough. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know that I know too much because, well, I've I've known this um, because I frequently wake up uh, after like a night of drinking and I just have like 30 different tabs open on my phone of Bigfoot, Bigfoot content. <laughs> just like, oh, I bookmarked a bunch of essays. I'm not going to read those. I'm not going to read them, but you might I'm interested. Up, you know. <laughs> Um, but here's how I knew that I knew too much is in the, <laughs> in the opening, in the like cold open when, um, D Wallace and her husband come out of their house and there are the big foot prints in their yard. Mm-hmm. I was like, not a dermal ridge in sight. That's fabricated. That's fake. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought and I was like, that is too good of a footprint. That doesn't make any sense mm. for that to be a footprint. It looks like. The foots were put down, and you sprinkled the snow around the feet. Oh, yeah. I was like, yeah. that's not how footprints work. Do they understand how footprints work? That's not how they work. Mm-hmm. That's my only complaint with the movie. The only one. <laughs> Absolutely the only no other one. Ones. <laughs> yeah. Everything else, perfect. <laughs> yeah, this was a real This was a real surprise one. This was a treat. This was a delight. The last 10 minutes, 15 minutes, were just pure magic. We're just beautiful. They were so fun. <laughs> and I was like, why would you? Whenever he was like, I'm just going to leave the wheelchair. And I was like, this seems like it's not going to go well if you do that. Also, why Why would you latch in if it's one story? Just I know. Slide I was down like, the she should have just, just jumped. Just slide down the rope. <laughs> like, you're fine. You're going to be fine. Like, why oh. are we having to bring any of this gear into this? Also, I loved that she, like knew how to repel straight away he like hands her a carabiner and she's like what's this and then she's she's got it she's off to the races and she did all like the safety stuff she even like i was like oh safety first great great (laughs) good job and then i was like oh no that's your downfall unsafety unsafety no safety (laughs) and then the part and the car and like that is the i think that's the moment when i was like oh this this movie Probably before that. I think when the guy got his face bitten off, I was like, for sure, this movie is supposed to be really funny because it is it's hilarious. So funny. <laughs> but that that last 20 minutes, I just could not. I could not get enough of that. <laughs> yeah, I had a great time. <laughs> it was the movie from our series that I was the least excited to watch. I even Same. like said right before I went into it, I was like, God, I wish we were just skipping to Mothman. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like I – this is – okay, what have we watched? Antlers, that was good. That was a downer. Yeah. I said that this one, Dog Soldiers was really good. Okay. Dog Soldier. <laughs> I guess after the next movie, we're going to have to rank them. But like, yeah. I, this was a great series this so was far. This really good. Yeah. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> this was the most surprising series, I think, that we've done so far. Because Kay K Bakes 50 50. Right. Yeah. On that. And this one has been all stellar so far. What do you think we would have? guessed the ratio would have been going into K-Bakes. 50-50. Because, uh, right? That's what I'm thinking, yeah. too. <laughs> yeah, or like 70-30, probably yeah, 70 in the yeah. bad, 30 in the good. But I was like, well, what's going to be good is going to be really good. Yes. Um, that's yeah. how I felt about K-Bakes. I was like, I have faith that at least one of the movies we were going to watch was going to be <laughs> worth it. The rest of them, probably give or take. But this one so far, I mean... The only one I wouldn't watch again is Skinwalker Ranch, probably. Yeah. Yeah. But even that, that was an interesting watch to begin with. I'm glad we started with it. I'm talking too. about this like it's like the end of the series, but I <laughs> we we have like the cherry on top next. So that's why I'm Well, presumably, I I've never actually seen the Mothman prophecies. I've read the book. We should we'll 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 save that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we can just start, and we're like, okay, let's just talk about it right now. I have, well, okay, we'll save it. I, yeah, we're just we're just so keyed up. Shit. We're so keyed up after these <laughs> Bigfoots. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, I have another fun fact. Yes. Um, okay, so did you did you think one of the cops was handsome? Oh, the one with the mole. I didn't notice a mole the on the, mole. the one that I was attracted to. So maybe we picked different ones. It was the first one that they talked to. 
Yeah, it was the one who printed off the email and who went to go look for um for Preston. Yes, he was, but at the end I was I thought that the guy with the mole was a was familiar. Mm. Maybe not attractive. Oh. <laughs> well, I no, got No, he did seem nice. He seemed he seemed I don't know. He did seem he seemed dopey, which I like. Yeah, I like I, that. I personally like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but the handsome one, um, I got curious about him because he looked sort of familiar and I think he might, he maybe just looks like, um, uh, key from key and peel. Phil Morris. What's that guy's first Deputy name? Deputy McBride. Well, go take a Keegan peek. Keegan Michael. Yes. Go take a peek at his IMDb. He was in a movie called Ghosts of the Ozarks. Yeah. We're gonna have to watch that. Where we're from. <laughs> oh, wow. 2021. Excuse me. What? Yeah. In post-Civil War Arkansas, a young doctor mysteriously summoned to a remote town in the Ozarks to discover the utopia paradise is filled. What? Mm-hmm. Is filled yeah. with secrets surrounded by menacing supernatural presence. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is a horror mystery thriller western. Ugh. Sign me the fuck Ugh. up, dude. Oh, my God. It's got David Arquette. Oh, my God. It's got Tim Blake Nelson. <laughs> I didn't click through, I guess. <laughs> okay, well, now we don't have a choice but to watch it. So, yep. you guys stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> we're doing great talking about other movies that we're going to watch this one, but what a good... I feel like this was... I don't know. This... It's not... It's not a Dead and Breakfast. It's not, like, the best no. movie ever made because Dead and Breakfast is that. Mm-hmm, but I mm-hmm. would, in in terms of horror movies that are fun to watch... I would rate this super high. Like, yeah. I I just, it had such a good time. Maybe it was my, like, super lowered expectation <laughs> that it was going to be dog shit. But it was so good. Yeah, just fun, just goofy. Um, I did want to talk about the soundtrack. So, wow. I noticed it. I noticed the soundtrack, which doesn't happen often. And here's why I noticed it. Yeah. There is a sound... That's like, I guess it's violins, oh. but it it was very clearly an homage to that, like, Ghostbusters sound. Oh, yeah, you're an audio person. You definitely, I, that completely over my head. I, I almost never notice stuff, but I clocked that. And I uh, meant to look up if that was intentional because there, there are a lot of, like, like you said, Easter eggs. The person eggs. who did the score was an Academy nominated score. Or I think maybe person. even winner. Ooh. And he's also the writer director's dad. <laughs> oh, that's sweet. Yeah. Uh, this guy, the writer director also hasn't done many other movies, which kind of makes me sad. And I kind of wish he did more. But he did other horror. He did um, Tales of Halloween in 2015. No Rest for the Wicked at Basil and Mobius adventure. Um, the the nurse and makeup guy also did makeup on Tales of Halloween. Oh, okay. If we had not done this series and seeked out cryptid movies, this movie would have just never been watched by us, which I think would have been a tragedy. I agree. I'm so glad that this made it on the list. And I definitely thought about asking to not if watch it. If we should not get it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... That's that's why we do this is because we end up watching things that we would not want to watch. Yeah. Like the cover <laughs> makes me believe that I would never want to watch this movie no. ever in all of time. You know what the cover looks like? Like like the cover of like the rule juror. <laughs> like it looks like a like a <laughs> 30 rock joke. <laughs> yeah, it does. It doesn't look right. It just it's like Dog Soldiers also had a terrible cover. Yep. And it was done better later. And it's the same thing. It's just like washed out blue nonsense. So good. Did I did I think I would come out of this a huge cryptid movie fan? <laughs> I'm like I've never been huge on like monster uh movies or anything like that. Well, I I'll mean, never show them, you know? You know what I mean? Amen. <laughs> um but this series has just opened my eyes to a whole range of movies I have not given a chance. Speaking of, there was something uh, that I meant to talk about during Dog Soldiers that I forgot mm. to while we were recording and I like texted you immediately after. I was like, son of a bitch. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. I kept seeing people 
uh, saying that dog soldiers is like predator for werewolves. And yeah, you know, we've talked on now. You want to watch now? Predator. I guess I want to watch Predator. Uh, but I'll probably just watch that Adrian Brody video again. Adrian Brody, <laughs> Adrian Brody. <laughs> oh God, <laughs> I do want to watch Prey. I do want to yeah. watch Prey, and I haven't seen Prey yet. And that looks good. Um, I might want to watch the original Predator at some point. I guess I have to. But that'll come in the future. I guess I yeah, have that'll to. come in the future. If you guys write us <laughs> and you really want us to watch it, we will watch it. But you have to write us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What do you want to watch? Uh, we watch these <laughs> things so we can tell you if they're okay to watch or not. And this is one of them yeah. that you should. <laughs> yeah. um, but we have told you many that you should not watch or you should go in knowing that you're going to be really upset for the rest of the week. Uh, not this one, though. Fun. Watch it. No, not this have one. Have a good night. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I do have a little bit of personal information about Bigfoot. Oh. I don't even know if I ever told you this. Um, you you do know this part, that I sometimes perform in storytelling shows in and around Denver. Yeah. And um, mostly I do, like, true story type storytelling shows, but I was asked to compete on a show called The Great Debate, which if you're in the Denver area, um, just keep an eye on whatever is going on at Bumpport Theater. It's great theater, uh, lots of storytelling shows, and also this show, The Great Debate. Um, oh, and they like write and direct and produce all of their own plays that are like really interesting and um, surreal a lot of the time. So great theater. Yeah. Keep keep your eyes peeled. Um <laughs> But yeah, they they asked me to perform on The Great Debate, which uh, pits two subjects against each other and like a team of four um, for each subject uh, does mm -hmm. a little presentation with a PowerPoint. And I Perfect. <laughs> uh, did the, the show that was Bigfoot versus the metric system. And obviously I was on the side of Bigfoot. Bigfoot wins. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, they won, obviously. Yeah. We won, obviously. Yeah. Without <laughs> a doubt. Uh, so, yeah, I put together like a PowerPoint. Poor metric system. The cards were stacked against oh, them from the beginning. Yeah, no, metric system yeah. never stood a chance. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, put together a whole PowerPoint <laughs> on Bigfoot and um, specifically about how he's an ultra terrestrial interdimensional being and also an environmentalist. I'll see if I can find the PowerPoint. Aww. I'll send it to you. I'll put it on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, I would love it. Yeah, that's that's beautiful. I did like photoshopping for that. Oh yeah, cuz this was I did like a midsummer joke. And so I had to put Bigfoot into like the midsummer flower gown. Uh, yeah. <laughs> perfect. That's perfect. God I love Bigfoot. Love Bigfoot. Maybe not abominable. Maybe not that guy. Oh, yeah. Or it was just the baby. Maybe baby. I think it was just the baby because they talked about how it was bad if it was the baby. And then you meet a bunch of them at the end who are much bigger than the baby. Yeah. He was talking about how um, animals only – he, like, suddenly was an animal expert. I was like, oh, are you also mm -hmm. a zoologist? And I didn't know. Um, yeah. He was like, they only attack if they're hungry or – territorial or they've got babies nearby and i don't yep. think this one's hungry and i was like yeah it did just eat four women <laughs> it's probably full or was it not one bigfoot were we seeing multiple critters yeah there was a ton there was like 50 eyes in the wait well we at the about? end there was but like throughout the movie oh, was it the I same one know. attacking yeah maybe it was multiple because it did it would leave and then come back and it wouldn't make sense for it to come back so soon yeah, and there was one – I felt like there was one part where uh, he saw the, like, branches moving across the way and then suddenly heard something behind him. Mm, so maybe mm -hmm. it was. Maybe it was multiples. Yeah. Don't go into the woods, guys. No. Yetis no. be there. <laughs> Yetis be there. Oh, um, after that first girl gets got and they find her cell phone out front mm -hmm. and, um, you know, she's got the unread texts from Preston – uh, and one of them like grabs her phone and is like, no, you can't look at it. She'd be so mad. I give you permission right now that if I disappear and you find I my phone, your phone. Okay. Hopefully you it will be someone emailing your phone number 
<laughs> That's Pete, a PP and Tom. Maybe we'll get that lucky. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank God. And same, if that ever happens to to me. <laughs> oh. Yeah, this one was fun. This one was super fun. Um, do you know the sound that Bigfoots make? In general or the sound that they use in the film? <laughs> I meant in general. Oh, okay. What I know sound, the sound did it make film. in the film? It was just like growling, it was right? A, they used a horse breathing and they slowed it down. Oh. <laughs> So just some extreme horse. Oh, um, is it the is it the nurse's last name? His character last name was Wilhelm, and I thought that oh, was a like fun the Wilhelm horror. scream. Yeah, there is a Wilhelm scream in it. Oh, uh, after one of the yeah, one of the girls gets got. There's a Wilhelm scream. Unless I'm fucking lying again. God damn. <laughs> Maybe I don't know the film very well. I thought there was. I read the trivia, but I I do not feel good about it now i feel like i'm questioning (laughs) everything that i read good for a sci-fi channel movie was this a sci-fi channel oh wow if so that's right it is good for a sci-fi movie no no i saw that i saw the like production company if it was a sci-fi movie it was a, a, a similar situation to dog soldiers where like it was totally done out of house yeah. and then they bought the rights because it the production company listed on on their wikipedia was um something else i don't remember what it was now but it had a unique name i'm gonna look at the trivia again uh Rex Lynn agreed to act in the movie under the condition that he got to play the monster in at least one scene. <laughs> was that the guy who was the principal from? No, his Who's name Rex is um, Paul Gleason. Oh, yeah. Who's Rex Lynn? I don't know. <laughs> I bet it is it even anybody in the movie. Farmer Haas. Could it, could it be D. Wallace's husband? Haas. Haas, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, good for him. I'm yeah. glad he got to be the monster. That's fun. <laughs> okay. Is seen taking a sip from a mug with a quote, don't mess with the bowl. So oh, okay. it is saying that that happened. I did not catch it when it happened, but it's mm. saying that that's a thing. What else is on there? Matt McCoy's second Bigfoot movie, A Kinder Gentler, Gentler Sasquatch, yeah. was portrayed in 1994's Bigfoot, The Unforgettable Encounter. Yeah, he's been in three Bigfoot movies. What a little freak. I want to know. How that happened. <laughs> I mean, I mean that lovingly. <laughs> yeah, I assume. Um, Wilhelm scream when one of the campers is grabbed by the Sasquatch. Okay, so there was the one. There was one. Yeah, the three campers. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, mm-hmm. okay. You know, I just saw um, on Twitter and did not check the sources. Uh, <laughs> but I saw that we they found the original recording of the Wilhelm scream. Oh, wow. Isn't that cool? I'll, yeah. I'll find it and um, that is make so sure cool. that that's true. <laughs> okay, that's fair. That's this is not a this episode's not super accurate, you guys. Don't fact check us a, on this one. Thank you. Yeah, we're not a facts forward podcast. <laughs> we are sometimes, but we will let you know. Yeah, <laughs> not up top, but right after, if you feel yeah, confident yeah. in what we're saying. <laughs> um, the last item on the trivia is warning spoilers. The Flatwoods Monster is the name of a popular urban legend in New Jersey. However, the legend deals nope. with aliens instead of Sasquatch. That's wrong. It's not New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair because they are, um, hey, ass monkey, eat this. Yeah, I forgot he said that. I'm looking at quotes now. <laughs> you know, I bet that they, I, I bet I'm trying to be generous. They're wrong. It's West Virginia. But. I'm sure that they were just thinking of the Jersey Devil for a second. Oh, yeah. That makes sense. Confused. Yeah. And it doesn't have, like, the name of the person who put in that fun bit of trivia. But so I can't tell them that they're wrong. Oh, my God. Do you think it was the Flatwoods monster trying Probably to, like, being like, guys, redirect. I'm in New Jersey. Uh, it's Jersey. <laughs> Damn. No, there's a, um, there's a Flatwoods monster uh, museum in. Oh, in uh, West Virginia, it wasn't in Flatwoods. It was in some other t- Braxton or something. Um, but they also have a bunch of Bigfoot content on their on the city website. <laughs> oh, that's awesome! A city just around Bigfoot. I feel like that is a good selling point for any city. Since this will be past my vacation, I am going to a monster museum. Did I tell you that? 
No. That has monster where? memorabilia from different movies outside of oh. Las Vegas. Oh, my God. Yeah, I convinced everyone to not go see Pitbull. And we're going to, well, at least one other person. And we're going to go see the monsters from the movies. Oh, my God. This I is know, so I'm so fun. excited. I will take so many videos. You got to. Yeah. Um, do you know, like, any of the exhibits? Or is it all going to be a surprise? Or? So, the thing that I can't tell is, and it's, like, put on by this one guy. I can't tell if they're remaking the items or they are actually purchased oh. items from the movie. Because at first I thought <laughs> they were purchased way. items from the movie. And then whenever I saw, like, a YouTube video of someone walking through it, I'm like, I'm not sure. But I think I like that better. <laughs> I want that. <laughs> to be, like, someone's handmade idea of every movie character or her movie critter. So I'm really oh excited to find out what it is and to show oh everybody. God. I will put TikToks, all of them. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love that idea. I feel like... Should I be that person who does reproductions? Because you know I love a craft. Yeah. I love an art. I love a craft. Yep. I love a I love a scary. Mm -hmm. I could do this. Yeah. And I know about dermal ridges, so my big foot would be pretty good. Accurate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is the problem that I'm gonna run into at these places is the accuracy is gonna be off. Yeah. I'm gonna have to call yeah. it out when I see it. I might have to go like <laughs> the owner and his son work there as far as I know. I might have to go up and okay. be like could you tell me why? Could you tell me why this is this way? What was your inspiration here? Are you trying to make a statement? We Help know that it was a walnut handle on the knife and not an oak handle. So, what so was what were the you trying to do here? You like, you think that you can do it better than the original? <laughs> <laughs> Come in really hostile. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm not gonna be like. Go or it, it it would be sweet if they like. Um, organized them not by movie but by their chronology like Aww. the order in which they made it so you can like <laughs> and see so the their quality skill just level gets better and better oh <laughs> i would love that so much oh this is fun i yeah. we've got an idea <laughs> we're on to something i'm also imagining it like um not in a permanent building but mm. Uh, actually, I'm about to say something, and I don't know if this exists outside of the South. Do you remember those, like, <laughs> touring reptile trailers that would set oh, up yeah. in, like, a parking lot? For yeah, sure. Yeah, that's what I'm imagining this yeah. is. <laughs> so, is that our next endeavor? We rent a trailer, yeah. and then we... Okay, perfect. Yeah, I think so. Just charge, like, $5 for people to go in. We'd make a killing. Yeah. With inflation? I've got a friend with an MBA. I'll get her feedback. I'll, she'll, she can help us build a business plan. <laughs> What would you? What would we call it? Never show the monster monsters. I like it. Oh, we're showing the monster. Showing we're showing the monster. The monster. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, we're gonna have to get that Patreon going. Yeah. <laughs> Things to look forward to. <laughs> Do we have any more Bigfoot thoughts? Abominable thoughts. Abominable thoughts. Um, no, I don't think so. I think. Just as a great movie. Go watch it. That's all I have. Great movie. Great movie. Go watch it. It's like two bucks to rent. Do it. Um, Just give them a little bump and have them be like, what the fuck? Who's yeah. Like, how Why is anybody <laughs> watching our movie? <laughs> I got more royalties from this movie this week than we got opening weekend at the box office. <laughs> <laughs> two things that we usually do at the top of the movie oh, or at yeah. the top of the episode but we were too excited about this movie we were really excited okay here they are number one did you see that moses storm is in the new charlie day movie no yeah i he's forget the name of the a movie lot of stuff recently that i have not got to watch he's like in a new tv show where he's like a bro bro yeah that's it guy. that's it that's it yeah mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, he posts a lot of pictures on his Instagram with his, like, airbrushed abs. Yeah, love him. Uh, uh. <laughs> love him. <laughs> what a goof. What a weirdo. Is it the movie Half-Baked 2? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's apparently in... Why are we doing that? I don't know. Jim Brewer and Chappelle are both bad now. Why? Yeah. We don't need to do that. That's why we have to, re we have, to have a second one with non-problematic kings. Moses oh, might be Moses that. Moses Storm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. 
Oh, how many people you are in John Stewart back Wow, there? what a great I know. cast. Holy What's shit. What's the name of it? What's the name of it? Fool's Paradise? Yeah. What? Yeah, the cast is incredible. I want to watch it so bad. And Whoa. blows a storm. See if you got Ray Liotta. What the fuck? Adrian Brody's in it? <laughs> oh my God, I didn't even see that Adrian Brody was in oh. it. Adrian Brody, Adrian Brody. John Malkovich. Sorry. <laughs> what? So will you say that again? You nope, were so I excited can't. that I Common's that in I it. Didn't... Common is in it. I love Common. Common? You know, the host of the furniture design show, not the rapper and or author. Same person. But oh, okay. <laughs> my favorite person he's ever been is the host of. Oh. Okay, cool, cool, cool. I'm going to have to, I have to name the show. I have to name the show for everyone's benefit because it's the best show. Framework. Because he did the song for it. It's called Framework. I didn't even find it, but it came into my head because I remember the song. I love Common. Common's the best. Okay, okay. Couldn't have I'm chosen a better person to be in the in the film. I know. You need to look. There are just so many people in this. There's so many people in this movie. I know. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Sometimes when there are too many good people, it goes bad. The trailer that I saw looked good. Okay, I'm going to need to watch that trailer. Man. And I just, I trust and believe in Charlie Day. Yeah, that's a good point. That's valid. That is valid. That's fair. Okay. There's also a lot of people I don't know, which I'm excited. Yeah, that probably means that we've got, like, more great people to look up. I'm so afterward. excited. Oh, yay. <laughs> oh, yay. I'm so... That's the best news. I, like... Yay! Uh, thank you for sharing that. Uh, You're welcome. That's so good. Who's going to be in Half-Baked 2? Frankie Muniz! <laughs> <laughs> What? And Harlan Williams? Oh. Was he in the original? No. Was he in the original? Yeah, I think he was. I love Harlan Williams. And you know who's not in it? Chappelle? Yes. I don't know. I'm scrolling down, but I'm pretty sure he's not. And so. Brewer. Yep. The people we do not like are not involved in it. So they were probably like, (laughs) the idea of this movie and the plot still funny, but we got to redo it with people that we we can keep going with. Oh, what a shame. Yeah. About them. About those two. Mm-hmm. Oh, boy. We almost ended on a high note. <laughs> We're going to watch Mothman Prophecies next week, and I'm so excited. Yeah. So that is the highest note. I cannot wait. After learning about the Charlie Day movie. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely excited about that. Um, going to gonna talk just so much about Men in Black, even though they're not in the movie, is my understanding. Um, Men in Black. Those are the ones. I'm excited. Ooh, ooh, sorry. I'm going to I'm gonna tack this on at the end before we, we leave completely, just okay. because I know that we've talked about Hell Year before. I finished the first season, and I think you've <gasps> talked to me about the Estes Method before, but that is such an yes. interesting way to communicate, and okay. I thought it was so, so cool. I, <sighs> okay, oh, we are about to start a whole new topic. <laughs> <laughs> have you seen it used um, often where it does does yeah. that happen in kindred spirits a lot yes uh, okay because that is like i was like oh there is like a you have like a double blind like i was like you don't yeah. have anybody interfering this is so well thought out it's very cool so the estes method okay gosh for the listener, the Estes Method is a technique used in ghost hunting featured around, not featured, focused around this device called a spirit box. And that is based on an earlier iteration called a Frank's box, oh. which is, um, it looks the same from the outside. Um, and people now apply the Estes Method to the Frank's box as well. Okay. And my understanding is that the Frank's box is much weirder and... oh. Maybe scarier, maybe darker. Sometimes scarier, sometimes darker, but also like more alieny. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, oh, yeah, oh. yeah. yeah it's I've weird. Seen a couple of people do have a spirit box on. This is going to sound her well as well. TikTok um, investigations whenever they are in haunted places, and I was like, oh, that's weird. But whenever they fi- they explained it in Hell Year, I was like, oh, oh, that's what they're doing. Yeah. But they're doing it the non, you know, like. Because then you do get, like, you kind of make it work on your answers. Right. But having that, like. Force it. Yeah, I Mm -hmm. love it. I love it so Mm -hmm. much. I was trying to talk to somebody about how, I was like, you would think 
that ghost hunters aren't logical, but they are like <laughs> overly critical of everything that they do, and they work so uh, hard to make their experience. Yeah, we're not talking about ghost adventures. Um, <laughs> I, <laughs> I'm sorry if any listeners like. No, I'm not sorry. I'm I'm not sorry. No, I'm not, not sorry. Good. I'm not sorry. Yeah. Um, but I'm not. the, I'm just the not. care that some investigators put into it is just, and that is. People putting a critical eye at something that is yeah. unknown and still be willing to be open and to believe and understand it is just I love it. Beautiful. It's beautiful. I love it. I also have um a spirit box in my Amazon what? cart right oh, now. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I want it. I want it so bad. Um, but the Estes method was developed at the Stanley yeah. here in Estes Park, Colorado, by Carl Pfeiffer and his group of investigators there the resident ghost hunters at at the stanley um yeah and they have a new that methodology a new documentary coming out weird planet yes, has I'm a new so documentary excited yeah. they've been teasing that for <laughs> so long i'm so excited when does it come I out i cannot wait uh i the last i looked it didn't have an exact date okay. but um this we'll year. do a shoot in the shit on it we'll do a shoot in the yep. shit on it i'm looking forward um, to it <laughs> in fact uh when they announced it the other day i tweeted it out from our no show monster oh, account and i said i'm putting this on the production calendar right now so perfect perfect I'm glad Thank you God. Agree. yeah completely agree <laughs> could not agree more oh boy as you can tell one of us does not look at our social medias and that is me and <laughs> sorry that's fine that's fine um i only look at twitter so when that goes down well <laughs> <laughs> Okay, this has been super fun. We covered a lot of ground here. Yeah, um, yeah good movie. Fun. You know what? Make sure to watch it. Make sure to watch yeah. this one. Um, next week, like we mentioned, we will be continuing our cryptid series with the Mothman Prophecies. And uh, that one, you know, centers around the collapse of the, um, what's it called? The Silver Bridge mm-hmm. in Point Pleasant, West Virginia. Mothman appears um and if you think you might miss us before next week you can go listen to our melodic voices on our other podcast called debut buddies which we host with our friend nate regolia our most recent episode is on the first uh lady serial killer and it's a doozy folks um and you know, I know we just said that we don't follow. We don't. We're not on our social media, but we are. We are. <laughs> I, I will look if you send us anything. I will look at it and I will yeah. respond in a professional fashion within one business day. <laughs> within two business days. This is like I'm at work. I'm always like, yeah, I can get that to you by this afternoon. <laughs> Fuck, I cannot. I cannot. Um, but I will get it to you as soon as I can. You have my solemn vow that i will respond to you on twitter before i respond to even a single work email that's my (laughs) promise to you the listener (laughs) so if you want to reach out reach out on twitter you will get a response immediately (laughs) if you reach out on instagram on the email you'll get it you'll get a response and it will be in one to two business days it'll be shorter (laughs) if i don't overthink what i'm going to respond with Mm-hmm. 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 At No Show Monster across the board. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week. Happy spooky. Happy spooky. Yes.